Hi everyone, I'm Tom Donnelly and welcome back to the Vinyl Hive channel. Another brand new type of video today, as I will be doing a review. Ooh! And I suppose the difference from other reviews is that as this is Vinyl Hive, I shall be reviewing the record itself combined with everything. Wow. And at the end, I'll be collating the scores all together and giving it a rating out of 10 Vinyl Hive Bs. I shall be remaining as objective as possible, as a good reviewer should, but I will be sprinkling in my uh, personal opinions throughout the whole video. So the first record to be reviewed on Vinyl Hive is this, the third studio album by Belarusian Danakwave post-punk synth-pop beasts by Molkat Doma. Uh, and this is titled Monument, and it came out November 2020. What a great year. This record was actually on my Christmas list uh, this year, uh, but on a trip to Piccadilly Records one day, I was able to find it, surprisingly. I went in on a hunch, hoping if well, anywhere, if anywhere in Manchester would have that, it would be there, and luckily they did, and it's a very nice blue version. And I got it for a good price as well, especially considering that uh, it sold out on the record label's own website, and it's limited to 2,000 copies of specific version. Ooh, 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 ooh. I wanted to get this album, as I had the previous album, Etazi. Here it is, and stupidly, I didn't pre-order this album. I mean, I guess I thought that it wouldn't sell out at all, but it did. And I will be uh, comparing this album to the previous album, as that's all I have to go off. As this is Vinyl Hive, we shall start with the record itself. After the band exploded onto mainstream popularity with one of their songs from Itazi, which is called Sudno, it went on TikTok and popular on there, which is actually why I got Itazi in the first place. And as it was popular on TikTok and the band got more attention, I imagine they had a lot more money to put into the production of the physical record. It's uh, especially compared ooh, compared to this one, as I will, uh, I'll let you know throughout this video. The sleeve is of good quality, it comes with a spine, and it also comes with a printed inner sleeve, which has lyrics in Russian, so not much help to me in understanding, uh, but it's good to see the detail gone into a release, especially in the modern day. The previous record uh, didn't even come with any, not even a plain inner sleeve, so the fact that it comes with an inner sleeve and it's printed, good job. Uh, the record label, Sacred Bones Records. As I said, these features were not found on the previous release, uh, at least the version I had, but it's good to see that the band is becoming a lot more successful and are able to produce high quality records like this. The main attraction for this version, at least for me, is the beautiful blue vinyl that it is on. It feels heavyweight, I'm not sure if it's 180 gram vinyl or not, and it does also come with a digital download code, which I have never used in my life but it's, as a package, it is pretty perfect, really. And considering this is a smallish record label from, you know, Europe, and uh, to be able to create physical record that is not too dissimilar from, you know, major record labels that create records, uh, it's good to see. So overall, the physical package gets a 10 out of 10 from me. Nothing I can fault about it. It's pretty much everything you would want from a record release. Well done, then. Alright, so before we get into the meat and gravy, the music, I'll give you a bit of background on the band and the album itself. This album was written and recorded whilst the band were quarantined in their hometown of Minsk, the capital of Belarus, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. It was produced by the guitarist uh, Roman Komolgortsev. Uh, but he was also the programmer of the synths and the drum machine. And he was also the lead on synths, so he had a, more than just a guitarist role. Synthesizers have always been a big part of the Molcap Doma sound, but with this album they took it up a notch, even having an impressive list of the equipment used, the uh, synthesizers specifically, on the inner sleeve. The only chart sources that I could find were from US sub-charts, I suppose, uh, worldwide, the US worldwide charts, which they did actually do quite well. And it seems that the US is a market that they've been able to break into. This version specifically is said to be a US pressing, so for a European band, you know, any European band, it's hard to break into the US, so good on them. Okay, so the music itself. Overall, the liveliness of the music has been turned up from the previous album, which has been a conscious decision by the band as they look to elevate themselves. And the production quality, mainly on vocals, have been turned up a notch. As on the last record, uh, 
Igor Shkutko sounded like he was stood on the other end of the room. So we can actually hear him now. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a track by track uh, description uh, of my personal thoughts and what I thought whilst listening to it for the first time. So let's go. The first track, Utonut, which means drown in English. Sets a tone well for what is about to come. It's very upbeat. Overall, the album is more upbeat than the previous record. It is heavily synth driven. It has elements that sound like they're exactly from an 80s track. And that isn't for the last time on this album. But as always, they put their own identity on it. In this track, uh, in particular, there are less acoustic elements, you could say. You no know, bass or guitar, really, mainly synthesizers and the drum machine being used, uh, which is what I do like about Malkat Doma, and it does appear in the album later on. Uh, so, but it's good to see that they are branching out from even from the first track, from what from what the second album uh, was giving us. The second track, Obrechen, brings in the guitar and bass uh, that is iconic to this trio. Now, the third track on the album is my personal favorite, Disco Deck. It is a 80s synth pop banger. Uh, and if you came from, from the last album, which is very dark and gloomy, and then this was the first song you listened to on the new album, you'd wonder where you are. Where am I? As this is a very, is a definite contract. Um, the song seems effortless for them, even though I imagine that a lot of work was put in. I suppose that shows how good uh, this band is already. And I guess it also shows how good they are at making whatever they want, and whatever style, whatever genre, theme, whatever they want, they can just make it. It is definitely the most fat paced an upbeat song on the album. It doesn't um, seem out of place compared to the rest of the song. And if you, Final High viewer, listen to any song from this album after this video, uh, I would recommend that one, Disco Tech. And at this point, during my first listen, first spin I should say, uh, I was very surprised at how upbeat the album was overall. But in the fourth track, Ni Shmejno, uh, this track incorporates darker vocals and elements from their previous album are coming in here. However, the general upbeatness that is found throughout the album is still there, so definitely a theme that they're kind of sticking to, I suppose. Uh, and this allows it to have its own identity. It's not just a Itazi uh, reject, I suppose. Okay, halfway through the record now, and now we're at track five. And it's the last song on side A, which is called Otvetanet. This song, for me, was a perfect blend of this album and the previous album's elements and themes perfectly fusing together. And it has a very nice guitar riff and bass line combo, which is very common with Mulcat Doma. And also incorporating Igor Shkutko's vocal. Side B begins with Spedi, or stars in English. And again, the combo of the chorus effect fueled guitar and the uh, and the prominent bass line are present here. And what makes this combo work so well together is that even though they naturally work together, as these two instruments do, but Mokap Doma allow them to have their own identity within a song and have their own individual parts, and they uh, just work so well together. So they've really found a good formula there, I suppose. And this means that the bass never takes a back seat and the guitar riff is never dull. The next track, Udalil Tavoy Noma took me by surprise. It starts off with a nice low bass line for about 30 seconds and it kicks in the high energy straight from the 80s melody. I can't exactly put my finger on what specific song this reminds me of, but regardless of its similarities to something else, it, it as always has its own mark on it, bringing it straight into 2020. I don't think he would want to stay here. The eighth track, Leningradsky Blues, again, has the guitar riff and bass line combo. The last track, uh, Lubit E, the Polnia, uh, To Love and Fulfill in English, is a fitting ending track to an album. It's slow and it's expertly, expertly, is that word? Expertly produced and is a respite of sorts from the high energy of the songs that just came. And it ties up the album perfectly. Right, well, that was a rundown of the tracks, and now I'm gonna give you my very own professional opinion. I was a bit nervous about this album, 
as I knew the band were great, but I didn't know what direction they would take with this. You know, I don't know if they, was gonna, if they were gonna go into a completely different direction from the song and the album that made them popular on TikTok, just to not put themselves in a box really. Or if they would stick to what they uh, were known for, is to, to please new fans or the label, I suppose, because that's what they knew people liked. But luckily, what they did was what they wanted and what they wanted was phenomenal production is upper level on this one but the last album was produced well anyway apart from the vocals as we've discussed and i was very happy overall and did not regret my purchase that's always good so now it's time for the all important scores on the doors uh, it's already off to a good start with the physical record getting a 10 out of 10 for me uh, the overall album design is uh, pretty strong, uh, but it's not so striking, you know, with the look cool scheme and grey. But, I mean, even so, it does suit the album well, I think, so... But there is definite room for improvement. So it gets a 6.9 out of 10. Lyrically, uh, I don't actually know what they're saying, but it seemed complex and various to me. At least that's what the record label's description says. So I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. So production score now, which includes the mastering and how um, it actually sounded from the record itself. As I've already said, there was a definite improvement from the last album, especially on the vocals. A really professional job and the elements that you want to hear. The bass and the synths were bright and prominent. So a 9.2 out of 10 for me. Holy moly. Okay, composition rating, the music itself, how it is, you know, how it is. The guitar riffs and bass combo, that I mentioned that are like the staple of Mallcap Doma now, weren't overused. They did try to incorporate songs that, you know, I guess didn't start with that or were built upon that, which is good. But at least on first listen, there wasn't any iconic uh, riffs I want to play on guitar, which I found on the previous album. But the addition of more synths and drums and an incorporation of uh, different styles uh, whilst trying to be in one theme is kind of hard to pull off. So overall, it gets an 8.5 out of 10. Okay, so overall... It gets an 8.42 vinyl high Bs out of 10. Wow. So on the Vinyl Hive review leaderboard, Oh, it just sneaks in at top spot. Well done, Molgat Doma. Well, there you have it, my first ever review, which I hope you enjoyed, and I hope it gave you everything that you would want from a review. But let me know your thoughts on this album in the comments section below, as I always like to hear from you. And I will put links to buy and listen to this record in the description box below. Thank you every single one of you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe uh, for more related content. Um, yeah. Bye bye.